Hi, this is John Humphreys with a very concise demonstration of how to use the popular MySQL open source database within a Node.js application. People typically associate Node.js with NoSQL databases, but it can work just as well with relational databases too. The library we will be using here has a very rich feature set which includes security, connection pooling, clustering, and all manners of typical data insertion and retrieval operations. What you find here is very similar to what you would find in Java or any other primary programming language for the backend. On the screen you can see some prerequisites for following this video, namely that you have MySQL and are capable of running queries on it. You can also see what we will accomplish in the demo, though we will cover more than the script says. So with that said, let's get to the code. So. To start out with, we need to create a database, or you can use an existing one, whatever you like, and we'll create a table in it called stock trades. This is just a simple table for us to have some test data against, and we'll insert four records into it, and afterwards we'll just run a select query to make sure everything is there. Looking good. With the database ready, let's move on to making our node project. We'll make a directory called node mysql, we'll change into it, and we'll do an npm init. This will create our package.json for our project, which will also let us import our mysql library. There we go. And we'll do npm install mysql at 2.11.1 dash dash save. This will install the MySQL library to our package.json. So if we type out the package.json now, we should be able to see that it does have the MySQL dependency, which is great. Now that our project's ready, I'm going to go open the folder that we made in Sublime. Here we go. So in here, we see our package.json that we added with our MySQL dependency. And now let's just create another file, and we'll call it db.js, I guess. That's fine. So at this point, we can start our coding. So first, I'll start by creating a MySQL import. We're just going to simply require MySQL. Nothing fancy here. After that, though, we can start getting to the interesting stuff. So, let's create our connection. We're going to use the create connection function, which takes an object of configuration, and it's got to take the host, it's got to take the username, I'm just using all of my settings here, so nothing fancy. It's got to take the password. It's got to take the target database. We call our stocks, if you remember. And it's got to take the port. 3306 is the default MySQL port in general. So this is actually just the connection string, really. We haven't actually created a connection, but it'll be created implicitly when we do a query, or you could explicitly create it. Uh, there's great documentation for this stuff, so you don't have to do everything the way I'm doing it. But let's go ahead and actually do a query. We'll do connection.query, and then we type our SQL directly in. It's good to use double quotes so that you can use single quotes around your text values. We'll say select star from stock trades, where ticker equals question mark. And in the question mark, we'll say it's MSFT. So we're looking for Microsoft tickers. And finally, we need to have a function that takes errors and rows back. We only get an error if something goes wrong, otherwise we should get rows. If there was an error, we want to log it out the console and then immediately return so we don't have to worry about it anymore. Assuming there wasn't an error, we want to do a for each on all of our rows just so we can print them out. We'll take each result and we'll do a console.log. 
We'll log the move, the shares, the ticker, the cost that the shares were, and we'll do the trade date. Now that we've finished that, we should go to our console and run our program by doing node-db.js. If we do that, we should see all the records for Microsoft from the database that we originally had. And you can see them all here, so that worked great. Now we can go on to try and insert a new record and rerun this so that you can see all the existing records plus the new one. To insert a new record, we first have to define that record. So we'll start by creating a new variable, and we'll call it our new trade. And we'll say it's an object, and we'll have four attributes. The first one will be ticker, and we'll make it MSFT, so that it's a match for the query we already have, so we can double check it. We'll say shares are 32. We'll say cost is 41.28, just a random number. And we'll say that the move was to sell. Now that we have that object, we need to insert it. So again, we're going to use connection.query, and this time we're going to say insert into stock trades set question mark. Now the question mark is going to be smart enough to take everything from our new trade that we put here. And after that, we again need another function that will take an error and a result. Now we're going to have a similar pattern in here. If there's an error, like say we have bad syntax or something, we'll print it out here and do console.log error and immediately return so that we don't have to worry about it. And if there isn't an error, we'll log the inserted ID of the new record. That could be handy in a lot of situations, but we're just doing it to prove it's possible here. You can get it by doing result.insertedID. Actually, it's insert ID. So that should be everything we need. We can now jump over to the console and see if it worked. If it does, then we should see the new record and all the previous records since this runs first. If we hop over to our console, we should be able to rerun the last command we did, db.js, and now we should see three results because of the extra one we've inserted, and we can see that the new ID was actually five. If we do it again, we'll have new ID six, and there's four results, and we can see two duplicates of our new object here, where we sold Microsoft 32 at 4128. So that worked great. So this is great. So far you have the ability to connect to a MySQL database, read data from it, and insert data into it, and get the last inserted ID. This is the foundation of a lot of what you need to make pretty much any web application or backend application that you could work on. So uh, with all that said, one last thing I'd like us to do is go into Chrome or whatever your browser is and jump to the npm mysql web page. This is just for the package and it's got the documentation. I'm not going to go through this whole thing with you, but uh, I just wanted to point out one advanced feature and allude to the rest. If you use databases, a common thing that we use is connection pools. This lets you execute a whole lot more queries from a whole lot more places in a way that still doesn't overwhelm the server and uses the resources the best way you can. So if we just look for the connection pool by searching, it's right near the top here. And uh, really, this library is so flexible that we would just have to change the top of our code to say create pool instead of what it says now and add a connection limit. And we'd pretty much be ready to use a connection pool. They're similarly easy, though slightly more verbose changes for it using entire clusters of MySQL servers. And then there's a million other simple features in here, like using prepared statements and stuff like that. I'm not going to dig through here, but 
I strongly encourage you, if you followed along here, to go dig around the page and see all the amazing things this library can do. Coming from a Java world like me, you might be surprised at how flexible this API is. I have definitely been impressed. Now, thank you for looking at this tutorial, and if you liked it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be doing many more on Node.js, Java, and anything else that I find interesting.